Today's video, we will be going over some Inside the Mind gameplay. What this series is really designed to do is to teach you how to get better at Madden NFL 16 through live gameplay footage as we break down the, in, the nuts and bolts of our schemes as we play on, in, an online in an online battle. Uh, for those of you guys who do not know or are new to the YouTube channel, I want to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Cody, and this channel is really, truly devoted to trying to make you better at Madden NFL 16. We do that through a variety of different types of content, but today we are in our draft champions game mode, and I'm going to be talking to you a, about some, some defense and some offense that we're utilizing. We're just playing some head-to-head uh, -head ranked draft champions, and I'm uh, really excited to share with you guys uh, this mode because I think that it's going to be probably the next stage for competitive play. So I'm going to be playing draft champions uh, for the most part of the rest of the year, I kind of want to, the problem is like I want to play Munt, but I just see competitive Madden. I mean, we just wrapped up the Madden Challenge, and that was Draft Champions, and uh, and now, as you can see, you know, this is this is something that I'm probably going to be playing a lot more of on my channel. That way you guys can get better, you can learn from my experience uh, in the game, and so I'm really, really excited to uh, to share with you guys and to hopefully make a positive impact on your draft champions experience so uh, real quickly I'm I don't even remember my playbooks to be honest for this I think I know I have a 3-4 playbook I think I'm in New Orleans I think that's what I'm running I got New Orleans and um, the thing is with defense I truly feel any playbook in the game can be successful because every playbook has two men under and in my opinion when you're playing draft champions, that is the defense that you really want to be focusing in on uh, as you're playing. In my opinion, uh, two man under is the hardest, and I do mean the hardest defense to consistently be on a down by down basis in draft champions because you have to have certain routes and certain players to beat it, and it's just very very difficult to do that. And so that's why I go with this playbook uh, because I really play more for the offensive side when picking my playbook because I have a lot of schemes out of quarter three deep, quarter normal, and uh, and those kind of defenses. So I kind of just focus on those, uh, find playbooks that have what I, what I want to do offensively, and then I just adjust uh, based off of, you know, wherever I need to be. So uh, that's a little bit of the introduction to the defense here. Like I said, we're using New Orleans and um, – Normally, I'm gonna run two men under until he shows me he can beat it. Um, you know, and, and as you can see, it's just a very difficult defense to beat, especially when you you know get a sack or two here or there. Um, there are there are certainly uh, for you know there are certainly things that do beat the two men under. The problem is not very many people run them. Uh, to be honest, a lot of people run verticals. A lot of people run. Uh, corner strike to beat it, and corner strike while it beats it. It doesn't really, it doesn't really crush it. So, and the thing is, I found uh, the Dime One Four Six Two Minute to, to be the best one for me, mainly because I can stop the run out of it, and uh, I think that's a definitely a big a big deal. So offensively, I'm running the New Orleans Saints playbook, and the cool part about this specific playbook is that it has uh, some of the keys that I utilize in my um, uh, the from the ground up offensive guy this this playbook has some of those keys uh, so I definitely am able to utilize this I got the legend Reggie Wayne and uh, he's actually really good uh, this Ryan Fitzpatrick however not the best um, he does have the threshold 80 deep accuracy, which is what I look for, but unfortunately, he just doesn't have everything else that you would want. Um, so, you know, I definitely think the quarterback is one of the most important positions by far. Uh, looking back on it, I'm actually going to be considering more of a bunch style of offense because in draft champions, it really boils down to the ability to do, you know, a couple of things well. And if you can do those couple of things well, beat two men under, run the football, and uh, be able to move the ball up and down the field quickly offensively, you're going to be successful. And uh, and so this playbook, specifically New Orleans, 
It doesn't have the best quick audibles. It has the power play. It has the uh, the, the Saints drive out, which is what I really wanted it to have. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the bunch, which is a big formation I like to use. It also doesn't have the trips wide flex tight, which is a good formation for inside zone. Uh, and so unfortunately, in my opinion, it just it doesn't quite match up to the other playbooks. But as you can see, we're still able to have some success. Now, the beauty of the Saints book uh, that the other playbooks that I like don't have is the ability to, to be able to utilize some really good two running back sets with the strong close and some of the other ones that we have access to. Uh, but the strong close quick toss is definitely one of the best runs in the game. It's one of the most underrated runs. And uh, I'm actually, you know, in my opinion, the, the key to draft champions is to have a four, is to really develop yourself within a formation that you're probably going to get uh, out of the three playbooks offensively. So, for example, Sirius Mo, uh, he won the Madden Challenge and he won it by playing draft champions. And he had a lot of really good schemes out of you know playbooks where he was going to get more than likely going to get that playbook for example he one of the main you know one of the main schemes he ran was gun doubles and um, and so he was able to utilize the gun doubles out of almost any playbook he got he was always able you know to, to be effective there so you know for me you know that's one of the key reasons why I would say that I'm going to have to move on a little bit from that Saints drive out because it's good play, but it's just the reality is it only comes up very slim in draft champions. I mean, this is the first I've been playing draft champions now for about three weeks, and this was the first time that I even had a possibility of a playbook that I could utilize. But as you can see, and there's two men under, so he's got a couple slant routes and crossing patterns which is mostly what you're going to see people do. Another thing you want to check is, like, who do they have at wide receiver? He's got the road to the playoffs, uh, Jamison Crowder in right now, and he's also got Andre Caldwell on the outside. So those receivers don't really scare me because I've got Leon Hall, Jonathan Joseph, and Ronald Darby at corner. So, you know, my corners are better than his receivers. Uh, you know, so with that in mind, I can now drop those guys and leave that one-on-one -on -one for the corners. And then there you see there's that two men under again. And, and you see, and you'll see, this will be a consistent thing you'll see throughout the game. I mean, two men under is a very, very simple defense. It's, there's not a whole lot to it. It's literally, you know, you man align and press coverage. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, and that's, that's, I mean, I do it all up and down the field. And the thing with it is it just wins. It just beats everything. And it's, it's. Let the three-man pass rush go because you're going to get one-on-ones, and then you cover the middle crossing pattern. You let your, you know, your, you know, you draft well with your corners, and in draft champions specifically, the route running is what's most important for those guys to get open. And a lot of guys, a lot of players, don't have enough receivers to really be solid route runners, and so that's why I believe the uh, best way to play draft champions defensively is to, you know, do a lot of two-man under style defenses. Uh, because you'll see that, you know, in my opinion, there's just not a whole lot of openings against the two-man under. Whereas, you know, if you run cover three, like if you were running the uh, cover three zone blitz style, then, yeah, I mean, you may, you may certainly have some positive moments and make some good plays, but... There's always openings. There's, there's, you're always open and vulnerable. And whereas the two men under, especially if you have a good team, you know, you're, you're really in a pretty decent little position. So here he's been running a lot of cover three. So just gonna check down to this little four verticals. But I can't snap the ball. Welcome to PlayStation Four. For some reason, if you go no huddle. Sometimes you can't snap the ball for whatever reason. I don't really know why, but um, it is a real thing. So he's still in that cover three shell look, so we're going to go into this 
Trey open Saint, which gives me trips to the left, puts my tight end isolated to the right. I'm going to run a little levels flood concept. And you see there he leaves Stephon Diggs wide open in the seams for a touchdown. That's just a pre-snap read. I mean, pretty much verticals is one of the best plays in the game against cover three. So, I mean, if he's going to give me a read for it, I mean, I, there's no reason for me not to go to it. Um, at least, to cut, you know, early on. Early on in the game offensively, you want to go with your basic offense, pre-snap reads and adjust and if you read cover two, try to beat cover two. And then when you see that they're making adjustments and they're calling things that are, you know, going to counter it, you know, that's when you want to get out of it. And there we see he can stop that strong close off or a quick toss. So that means we're going to have to find something else that we're going to be able to establish. Uh, defensively, the two man unders worked pretty well. I think that uh, I think he got the ball. So a little bit of draft champion strategy specifically now. Um, most people, like in this situation, I'm up two possessions and I get ball at half. So pretty much. You know, I'm in a really good position to win. So this is where a lot of people go wrong. They'll start blitzing and blitzing and blitzing, and they'll give up big plays. But this is where you really go streamline and heavy, heavy two-man under. And the reason is because the chance of them getting a big play against two-man under, as compared to the chance of them getting a big play against cover three this season, extremely rare against two-man under. Whereas cover three, it actually is pretty common. See there, like, you'll get those crossing patterns, but it's a catch tackle. You know, I mean, even with some of your water, your lower-rated corners, I mean, it's still very difficult. So that's why we're going to this defense in this situation. It's not just because, you know, we just think that it's, you know, overpowered and blah, blah, blah. I mean, even though I do, you know, a little bit of me thinks it is a little overpowered. The reason is because the big plays they're going to get is a lot lower against two men under than it is against, you know, if you were in, like, a cover three. Uh, and occasionally we mix it up and we'll throw something else. The most common play that I go to off of the two men under is the cover two. And I'm actually going to go to it here because he's been he's been doing a pretty good job against the two men under on this drive. He's starting to get kind of, you know, used to it. And when they start getting used to it, that's when you really want to change it up on them. So here we're going to go to some two man under, or excuse me, cover two. We'll go ahead and pass him because he hasn't really committed to running it yet. And throws there's that corner out, and he throws it into three guys. So, I mean, you can see the game planning uh, occur and take place here. It's not just two men under. It's two high safeties, and we do a lot of things with it. Um, if he shows me he can beat that, then we will adjust. It's just his only way of beating it so far has been slant routes and those things that have been, you know, easy catch tackles for the defense. See here, we're still in that too high safety look. There's that one-on-one, -on -one and we're able to give. And that's what I'm saying. Like, he doesn't have that good receiver, so he has Jamison Crowder out there. We switch it up to cover to sink. He forces a throw in the seams, thinks he has a good read on us. Cam Chancellor, 97 overall, is there to make the play. So here he shows uh, cover three again, but in this situation, you don't want to be too aggressive. So we're just going to go with a basic zone flood. I put the wrong guy on the streak. But Daniel Fells makes a big catch for me in the seam. And now we got a chance to maybe make this a three-score game before halftime and really put him in a precarious position. Once you get up, in my opinion, that's when the two-man under really starts to really work well. When they can run the ball, your two-man under defense is not quite as strong. But when they have to pass, I mean, it's a very difficult defense to beat. And the same thing with the offense. When they're playing from behind and they have to blitz you, I mean, this thing becomes really, really locked down. Uh, so here we're going to go ahead and go in and he's going to go ahead and quit. So that's going to be the end of the video guys. So a short inside the mind gameplay, but I hope that it gave you a little bit of a glimpse into how I play draft champions and hopefully in the next